it's Sarah and I figured I'd do a tutorial for the little um, I'm calling them sugar skull dolls now they're little button dolls button and bead dolls and I use the little sugar skull bead for their heads um, so let's get started I am using e-beads these are called 6 slash 0 glass seed beads for some reason I want to call them e-beads but they're not um, big they're small they're so the the um, tutorial that I used was uh, Nina Ribena and she was using pony beads and I just feel like they're much bigger than this so that's why I, d I wanted to do a tutorial with this size for the sugar skulls because I know I, I, a lot of you guys now let's see I wish I knew what gauge or whatever these are but I'm just gonna do like a measurement they're about a half an inch tall so like that's how big they are they're they're like a half an inch wide half an inch tall so they're like a half an inch square they're small <clears throat> these are like I said the six slash zero glass seed beads and then these I'm using for the little catch piece is is an eight slash zero metal seed bead um, so just use what you have if you have these kind of beads you can use any colors you want um, let's see the the ones I made in the beginning like see I used pink for her I used these are like a little bit more of um, a clear bead I used yellow on this little emoji girl so use what you have I knew this was gonna work. stop dogs are crazy today it just all of a sudden and it stopped now thank goodness but a tree blew down it just turned into like a storm. I live in South Jersey, but like the dogs got crazy. <laughs> so they're calm now. Kiwi's all right too. Um, so anywho, buttons. You need buttons, beads, and uh, wire. This is 28 gauge wire. And I made a mistake. I thought I bought 28 gauge, but this is actually 26 gauge. And it works just fine. I used, um, I did it on this one. It's just a little tight it's a little thicker the higher number the smaller this the, the uh, wire and I had this it's kind of like a little rusty almost it's uh, silver it's kind of gray I don't know if it's rusty but I just made this little guy with it figured I'd make a couple silvers I love the golds though that's just because I had gold wire and I happen to have these keychains in gold so anyway that's what you need I cut the wire to 16 inches and then you have it so you, you need a piece of 16 inch wire and then you're gonna bend it in half and that's what you're gonna work with two of these you need two and that's what you need and then you need it like I said a key ring and then I'm just gonna use this um, crochet hook to make my little loop at the end but that's about it oh you need nippers little wire nippers and like a, a plier just to kind of pull the wire through you don't really need the pliers but they really help and I actually have one of these things this is a jump ring opener I didn't have one of these for a long time and man it's hard to open those jump rings but this is such a handy tool to have all right so first thing you want to do is just start off with a little gold I put everything down here five beads per leg and arm so five 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 so for each appendage and then a little gold bead as your stopper or your foot or your hand so I'm gonna try and see what I'm doing that one goes down in the middle and just stays in the middle to hold the bottom and then we're gonna thread the rest of them on both of the wires so first you thread that one onto one then we put all five of these on both of the wires. I'm going to move in a little, sorry. Two, three, four. And th these aren't uniform, these beads. They're kind of wonky and bent and stuff. They're glass. I don't know how they make them, but so that's one little leg. We're going to do the same thing for this leg. So first you put the gold bead on just one wire and pull it down to the center then you pull your wires together and thread the rest on like this bead is super wonky I don't love that one 
two, three, got two super wonky ones on this leg, four, five. Now you want to take both of your little legs, hold your wires together, and put them on your bottom B. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which you can do it with five, six, seven, as many as you want. I made this pile graduating in size in blue, and I'm actually turning this button upside down because if I put it this way, you don't really get the full beauty of the bead, but I figure if I do it that way, it'll stack nicer and you'll be able to see it from the bottom. That's just my little way of thinking. And put each leg in one hole. If you have two hole be uh, buttons, I'm, I keep saying bead. You can use two or four hole buttons, but just make sure you use the uh, opposite holes. I'll show you. There's the next one. Nope, the next one's a two. So I'm, again, just put both wires in one hole. Now this one's a four button, so I'm going to put it in crisscross, so the opposite hole, not next to each other. They just sit wonky if you um, don't do that. So this is a four hole. You just want it to go on the opposite each other, not next to each other, if you know what I'm saying. I got these beads on, uh, I got these at jo Joann's, I'm pretty sure. This was a mixed bag of greens and blues. Do I want to put this upside down? Sometimes the buttons are a little curved, so I feel like they sit better if you flip them sometimes. And because these are stacked, you don't really see the full uh, presence on the top, so um, it doesn't matter as much. One and two. So this is his little body pull it all up together. So see, it's already looking like a little body. Now we want to make the arms. So you're going to take one of the wires from each side. So I'm just bending down one wire and I'm going to string five beads on it, starting with the white ones, not the gold first. Oops. Three, four, and then the gold one. Oops. And then you're going to take the end of the wire and not the gold one, just string it through all the rest of the beads, all the white ones. Make sure you kind of try and get it to stay up against the buttons. This is where your plier would come in handy because you can take those and hold the wire next to the gold bead and then when you pull it you get a nice tight snug arm. Do the same thing for your other arm. I can do it better with my left hand for some reason. Three, four, five, and then the gold bead and then you're going to take that again and you want to string it back through the whole arm but not the gold bead. So let the gold bead fall and go all the way through. Like I said, you can just hold this wire with the plier right at the end. It just it makes it easier to snug it. Then you're going to take all your wires together again. So see you have arms and we're going to make his neck. I'm just going to cut these all even so that um, it's easier. I want to put another little white bead for his neck. That's why the gauge of the wire matters depending on the beads you're using just because you might have small holes like this little hole right here. I did manage to get them through. I put that on the top but I could use a white bead up here. If, if I needed to, you know, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. So I like to snug that down too. Then you put his head. We're going to make give him a hat. I chose, 
Usually you want to choose a button that has kind of like a concave top to it so that it fits on his head. So we're going to separate this out into our two sections again and go opposite. So one hole and then I like to put another little one on top for um, to make it look like a hat, like a little top. Let's see? I think he looks like um, somebody stop me, whatever his name is. Uh, anyway, so there's my little blue guy. And then last but not least, you put one of these on top just to hold them together. And then we're going to make our uh, loop to put the key ring on. But this is a bit small. I did manage to get it on the other one, so I'm going to go for it. On camera is not the easiest. And I may just give up and go with the, um, a white one. I got two in. I got three in. I got four. All right. And you just kind of snug it down as best you can. I like to have it. Oops. So I'm just pushing down. And you're going to take whatever, a pencil or something. This is a little smaller than a pencil, so that's why I chose to use it. And go one, two, wrap around, and then wrap around the bead. And I'm definitely not being perfect at all. Like, this is real rough, actually. I just want to tuck those ends in a little bit so they don't poke. I was kind of thinking of Liam when I made this one because I don't think he would like any of these. Well, maybe he would because maybe he could get away with the green or the white. I made the yellow for Maya because she lo excuse me, loves yellow. And then this is the cool part about these... Um, this jump ring opener thing, it has a little hook on one side. And you just take it and go and just clip it on and it opens the jump ring, which is awesome. What is this called? A split ring, not a jump ring. You can just thread it, thread it right on there. And there it is, your little key ring. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys. I mean, it was fudgy because you know, things are little and it's, and so on camera, but I just wanted to remind you, um, buttons. Now see, look how the different buttons you use make a difference. Like these are bigger, this little hat. I think this, this perspective is perfect. Look at this little hat. These, this size hat is the cutest. This has one, two, three, four, five, six buttons. This has three, seven. Some of them, I think I even did five. Most of them have six. Six, six, six. Six is the most appropriate, but look at the smaller size hat. I really like that, the smaller size hat. All right, you guys, so that is the tutorial for these little... I'm just going to put these away, and then I can gift them to people them in the little package for my peeps. Maybe Liam would white want that one. Alright you guys, that's it. Oh, no that's it. Thanks for watching.